Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about preparing your network and data room. I'm sorry, are you ready? Okay, preparing your network and data room to be energy efficient. Uh, my name is Mike Beck. I'm the president of BBL, representing Liebert Products and Services. Liebert is a division of Emerson Network Power. And I'm going to take you through a couple of slides on just where energy is used in the data center. Uh, the first slide depicts the breakdown of, of how we use power in a data center. The right side in green is your computing equipment, servers, switches, all the stuff that's in a rack or that's plugged into the, to the network. And on the left side is the power and cool, what it takes to power and cool that. So it's a pretty much a one for one ratio there of, of utilization, of uh, power consumption, I should say. And uh, one of the uh, people at Liebert who was, who was very geared towards sustainability and energy efficiency has developed a, a uh, what they call energy logic. And this is a what they, uh, we refer to as a cascade effect. And the, and the basic concept is this. If we start on the left here with a server or some piece of computing equipment, and if we can save a watt there, and then if we can buy a more efficient power supply for it, if we can buy a more efficient power conversion, we can distribute the power more efficiently, we can provide uninterruptible power more efficiently, we can provide more efficient cooling, and even out to the switchgear and transformer, the power that, that room, or the, the building even that it's that's serving, you have the ability to escalate or cascade that one watt all the way up to a total of 2.84 watts. So it's pretty significant. Uh, you can take this and um, I'm going to take the presentation now and talk about just a couple ideas on the server side of where you can save and then where that, where that corresponding power can be saved on the uh, rest of the support equipment, that other half of that pie I showed. I'm just going to back up one second here because this won't make any sense to you if I don't show you the previous slide, which is just where's power used in a network or a data room. It's kind of a 50-50 situation. Half of it's computer equipment and half of it is the power and cooling to support it. Okay, so we're going to make the case of how do we how do we holistically look at this thing and how do we get more energy efficiency out of the whole pie here. So uh, where is power used? Well, it's used by uh, you know these these servers, switches, and so forth. And this is this is kind of an hourly profile of how we utilize power. And you can see we have. Um, significant power usage during the middle of the day and not much at night, and you would expect that, right? Uh, one of the things that's going on in the industry is a, uh, is a, a uh, topic called virtualization. Um, are you familiar, do you use virtualization at Philly University, or do you know? Okay. It's, uh, and, I, and, I, and Cameron, I'm not sure if you're familiar with virtualization, are you? What's, what's going on? This is revolutionizing the data industry. It's basically all about, instead of having one application matched up with one server, it's about putting many applications on virtual servers. You might have one server, but you can, but you might have one server, but you may have up to, you know, 20, 30, 100 applications running on it, and they partition that server to make it like 10 or 12 or 100 virtual servers. So this is what's changing the industry, uh, and, it's, and it's gonna make, you know, going back to the previous slide, it's gonna make this flatter. We're, we're not gonna see this big spike. We're gonna use, it's gonna be better utilization of the power. So that has some dramatic effects. Um, the biggest thing that goes on with, uh, with virtualization is, is they, they, because of virtualization, they do have the ability to uh, really create a, a nice redundant platform not only saves energy, but if a virtual server fails and they have a and they have their virtualization set up this way, they can immediately flip the whole application and everything over to another server seamlessly to the end user. Um, there's other advantages too. Ma management just makes it easier for an IT guy to manage it. It saves energy, saves costs on servers. Instead of buying a bunch of servers, you just take your big server and, and or, or maybe two servers and put it together. It helps easing of expansion, and it, for the one fellow that I dealt with uh, who had done this at the, at the school district, test bed for new servers. It was just a great way for him to run the application, test it before he implemented it, uh, 
to make sure that it, it was going to work properly for their uh, facility. Um, this is uh, just what happens with uh, virtualization is though some things do change because now we're looking at a lot of people then start moving to uh, Blades servers because there is the advantage, or, or I'll say there may be the requirement in virtualization to have compatible servers. They have to be kind of similar size and feel and capacity. Uh, so after you implement virtualization, you've, you've done what you can do there, you've, and now you've gotten more efficient, uh, one of the things that we've uh, run into is a real need for, for cooling assessments. And Cameron, you and I are, are discussing this now. Um, we, Liebert has a, a product called a, a cooling assessment. We will come out and do a full analysis of the data center. We will look for areas for improvement. We'll benchmark where it is. And we'll give you solutions and recommendations for future improvement. So what would some of those solutions look like? Well, we have... Um, I'm going to take you through a couple of uh, different products that are out there now that are kind of revolutionizing the way we cool and power uh, data and network closets uh, and data and network rooms. We have a, a, a Liebert Foundation MCR mini computer room, and basically this is a refrigerator. It would house your servers, house an uninterrupted power supply, put it into a closet. We had one customer that was going to spend $25,000 to do air conditioning in a network closet and we sold them this product for $7,000. It's a huge money saver, energy saver, and the beauty of it is, is if, if there's some places, there's always some change moving around in, a, in an organization, and where you, where you started that network closet today may not work in the future, it's on wheels. So you can move it to another location. Uh, we get, this handles up to 3.6 kW. If I go up to as much as 14 kW in a similar model, just a little bigger size. It allows it to modulate its capacity anywhere from 4 to 14 kW energy efficiently. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, if you remember, I talked about virtualization being so wonderful because of the redundancy. It does require, you know, if you're going to have redundant servers, it would really make sense to look at redundant air conditioning systems. So we have a couple of different solutions where we have an in-the-row system that would have two air conditioners doing the cooling in front of all these cabinets or two units in the ceiling providing cold air to the front side of the cabinets and the hot air returning to the back. Or we have a wall-mounted solution as well that would blow cold air into the front of the rack and the warm air would return to it. And of course, you could put two of those units side by side. Uh, not to go crazy with technology here, but as a mechanical engineering background, you would understand a compressor. And uh, compressors are the, are the heart of any air conditioning system. We utilize a, uh, a patented technology called a digital scroll compressor. The digital scroll is just as, you know, just like our, our ones and zeros in the digital world. So, okay, I take in over a 10, say for instance, a 10 second increment, I'm going to allow refrigerant to go in to the compressor and let it work, and then for nine seconds, I, I disengage the compressor, just using a, a, a solenoid valve to, to lift it, and it doesn't do any work. It's still spinning, but it's not doing any compressing, so it's using very little energy. Right. That gets me 10% capacity. If I do it for five seconds engaged and five seconds not engaged, I get 50% capacity. So this is revolutionizing the air conditioning industry. Uh, you, you will start seeing this even in your home air conditioning systems shortly. Some, of, some manufacturers even have it there. We have the uh, exclusive rights for it for, for data rooms. And if you think about it, somebody moving in today, they may only have a small load. You put in a larger unit to f have, handle future loads. This allows this unit to run efficiently and more reliably at a part load. Can I ask questions? Sure. Uh, I'll the video. Um, this goes along the line of like VFDs, right? Uh, it's similar, okay. similar. A little different technology, but I'll tell you what, in effort to just keep this thing rolling, we'll talk, we'll talk about it at the end, okay? okay sure. Great. Uh, other types of cooling, in other words, to make your cooling more efficient, we do look at some other in the row type of cooling systems that blow cold air directly to the openings of the, of the uh, cabinets that are either ceiling mounted cabinet mounted or in the row mounted. One of the key pieces of cooling one of these rooms 
is, is the piece of equipment that we are cooling, and that is the, the, the server rack or enclosure. Uh, Liebert does uh, manufacture products by a company called Kinnar, and Kinnar offers a couple features that are unique. We have a little demo of it out at our, uh, our room, uh, out at our booth there. But the main feature from an energy efficient standpoint is 83% free area doors. I have a very large webbing on the door. Not big enough that you can stick your finger through anything, but it's, it's very fine. You can see it on the cabinet out there. It's all about just decreasing the amount of resistance the air has to go against to go through the cabinet. Uh, it is real important um, in, in just good general data center design and implementation is to utilize blank off panels. Here we have a rack, here's a grill where the air comes out and there's a big opening right there. Well the air will naturally go right through that opening and not, it's going to bypass where it really needs to go which is on the entering side of the servers. So just good management of, of the, uh, the airflow around the cabinets. This is, a, this is an ugly situation here with wires. The wires now impede airflow, uses more energy to move the air through the servers. Okay? Uh, moving off of the cooling, uh, we also offer an electrical data center assessment. We will come in and, and again, and anal analyze the entire data center uh, as a holistic, so, uh, on a holistic basis. We'll look for a lot of the things on here are not only about energy savings, but they're also about safety because there's a lot of unsafe, there's a lot of big power coming into these data centers and uh, it's just proper labeling of panels to make sure everybody is, uh, is safe and, and we don't uh, hurt people. So uh, data center efficiency, the, uh, the common term that's out there is called the uh, uh, power usage effectiveness. Uh, the Department of Energy has actually developed this. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a method of looking at what the power is into the data center and then uh, we divide that by the IT equipment power that's being used. Well, in order to calculate this PUE, you need the necessary uh, instrumentation to, to do that, okay? And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, how you, how you as, you're, as you're looking to look at your energy efficiency of your data center, the only true way to look at it is to be able to measure it and see what, what it's using. So, uh, I just throw this up here as a standard that's out there. Um, I've heard there's, and, and this is still up for debate. A lot of this is still in a uh, early stages of what should be the right way to measure efficiency. I've heard some people talk about just, you know, uh, MIPS and you know the, the 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 amount of data you're crunching divided by the energy you're using. So you know, the reverse of this DCIE, and the DCIE is the is the reciprocal of this, right? Yeah. So uh, on the power side. Uh, I, I always like to point this out because uh, there seems to be a tendency in our data market that when someone buys a server, usually whoever they're buying that from, whether it's Dell or CDW or, or one of these resellers, they ask, the, they ask the regular question which is, would you like a UPS with that server? Which, so it's kind of like, would you like fries with that? Okay. So what happens is many data centers ends up, uh, end up having like maybe five cabinets and they might have ten UPSs which becomes, well, first of all, becomes a, a liability because the more moving parts, the more things out there, the higher probability of something failing is. But from an efficiency standpoint, those little rack mount UPSs, while they're good, and while Lieber does manufacture them, they just aren't as efficient as a larger UPS. Now granted, it's not a lot, but in this day and age, we're looking to save whatever we can, correct? So you can see over the, over the course of that, uh, it's, it's, it's power loss is a, a third less uh, than, it's, uh, than uh, if I look at 10, 10 kVA UPSs versus one uh, 100 kVA UPS. So large UPSs are more energy efficient. Would the uh, heat dissipated by them would be different too? Well sure, exactly, because more less efficient is also going to be, that's where you're going to end up, you're going to use more energy there to cool that extra heat, exactly. Uh, some technologies that are out there today in, in some of our products is a product is a, a feature called soft scale, which allows you to buy a, a, a UPS today that will run efficiently as a 40 kVA UPS, and then by just a software upgrade, 
as long as we have the, the proper electrical feeds to it, we may need to add some more batteries to, to give you the longer battery life. But you can, with a software upgrade, take it from a 40 to a 60 or 80. So you're not uh, replacing what you've just put in because, of, because your, your, your load requirement changed. We're allowing some, you know, let's, let's look at the future where you could go, but let's only run what we need today. That's a, a great feature and a price to, to make it worthwhile. Another option is what we call eco mode. When you have an uninterruptible power supply, it is converting energy from AC to DC and back to AC power. As it does that, there's inefficiencies in that conversion. We use the most efficient pro uh, products available to make that conversion. However, we're still, there's still inefficiencies associated with them. We offer the ability to run this thing in what they call an eco mode where, again, we can increase the efficiency from 93 up to about 97% efficiency. Basically, I'm running it around all the equipment with a very high speed switch inside this box that when it senses any deviation in power up or down, seamlessly to the load, it, it quickly corrects that before it has any effect on the load. Again, just in, a, in an attempt to be more efficient, we're just trying to, you know, this, this is all part of that cascade effect of, of improving efficiency. Um, last thing, and how am I doing? Five minutes, okay, I'm almost done. The, uh, the last thing is, uh, again, going back to that redundancy issue, we talked about uh, virtualization's ability to work redundant across servers. We talk about uh, air conditioning, the need for redundant air conditioners. If one fails, why, why it's great to have a redundant one. On the power side, uh, there's redundant power su supplies in a lot of the servers and switches today as well. And it wouldn't do you much good to plug the same power supply in a server or switch to the, to the same power strip over here because if I had a failure of that power strip, I'm done. So what's typical in the industry is people will do something like this where we will provide two power strips in a cabinet and allows you to uh, distribute the power both ways and the ultimate configuration is two uninterruptible power supplies feeding both, uh, one feeding one power strip, one feeding the other, again for maximum uh, redundancy. And remember these things require maintenance. Batteries do need to be replaced. This allows you to keep your load up and running on a UPS. While, while this one's being repaired, that one can, can carry the load. Power strips that go in there, it's important going back to the measurement of what you're using in energy. It's very important to utilize a monitored power strip. Let you take a look at how many amps you're drawing. Uh, in with that, so if we monitor the air conditioning, we monitor the power, we monitor the uh, power strips. We have a, a front end called Enforms, which allows us to aggregate all that information and serve up that, that the information necessary to, cal to calculate a power uh, usage effectiveness. Uh, I'm going to skip this slide. and. Uh, so we talked about redundant passive power to each server, redundant UPSs, redundant air conditioning, monitor everything so you can measure efficiency. Uh, we talked about data center assessments as a way to, to handle that. We have a for fee data center assessment that's very uh, detailed. It will provide if you have a, you know, it's the, this is appropriate for something with maybe like 3,000 square foot of data room or larger. Uh, we will send a team out from Liebert and they will go through your data center with a fine tooth comb and generate a, a high-end report suitable for a, a CEO or a CFO or a CIO of, a, of any university or a company to basically give him the summary of where he's at and where they can go with that room. I also do offer, uh, our people are trained in giving what we call an instant uh, survey. For, we have a, a local people here, about 20 of us locally in the Philadelphia market. If you'd like us to come out and check out what you guys have at Philly University or going over here, um, we'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. So takeaways, uh, first of all, save energy by buying more efficient IT equipment, more efficient power supplies. Ask your, you know, your HP or your Dell or your Cisco or whoever the products you use. Ask them, you know, ask the questions. How do I get a better efficiency on that, on that power supply and what can you offer me? Uh, virtualization is pretty much a no-brainer at this point. It is a, it is a great way to, uh, to save from not only from an equipment standpoint, but from an energy standpoint. Uh, every watt saved at the equipment level has a cascading effect, and our assessments can help create a path 
to improve your network and data room efficiency. Last, on uh, May the 5th, we are having an event at our facility in Bristol, Pennsylvania. It's called the Efficiency Without Compromise University. Uh, would invite you to please come to that. I have a card here. It is free. There are uh, CEUs associated with it. And, um, and I, guess I, I guess I'm being wrapped up here, right? So I thank you for attending. And... Uh, I think we, I need to move out of the room here so the next guy can come in. So uh, thank you very much. And you folks online, I hope you really enjoyed.